transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. That's right, this is another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. You probably don't know that though. Wait, I'm your host, Old Heart. I'm here to talk to you about things that you probably didn't care to know, or maybe you did care to know, and that's why you're listening. Either way, it's stuff that's like really helping me ripen up my coconut as I live life, I guess. Live life to its uh, liviest. Um, Either way, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know... Thanks for listening. If you're here, if you're not here, then you're not listening. So no thanks to you. Uh, I'm sitting down here with a cup of coffee, a fine cup of coffee, possibly the most needed beverage of the day. You know what I mean? Coffee in the morning. Ah, we should have bought coffee. Thank you, coffee. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for the millions of people around the globe. Uh, but. There's like actually something about coffee that is a little strange. It's, uh, you know, me sitting here recording a podcast, drinking a cup of coffee. It's, you know, your mom going to Dutch Bros, getting a fucking giant caramel blender extreme or whatever the hell they call them there. It's, you know, it's the Starbucks. It's the the local coffee shop down the street. It's, uh, it's unsustainable. And, and... Anyway, it's been something that's on my mind, so in the future here, I'm going to be doing a couple episodes, I think, on the sustainability of coffee, and maybe even the history of coffee, because I was reading just this morning about uh, the history of the international, like, coffee agreements, and the whole coffee alliance, or whatever. It's interesting. It's very interesting stuff. For something that, like, continues to be such a pivotal part of all of our day. So... Either way, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we are talking about, we are tipping our hat and congratulating Alan Moore. Alan Moore is officially retired from comic books. I know everybody thinks he has because he hasn't been writing, you know, any swamp things lately or whatever, but that's because you're not really a comic book fan. So get out. Uh, (laughs) Just joking, don't get out. Continue reading. Comics are great. Uh, Alan Moore, though was notoriously like kind of just like an amazing writer right out the gate like boom he hits you with some good stuff his like i mean under his belt you you have you know watchmen v for vendetta you have swamp thing you have uh, the killing joke which is like the one of the most pivotal and probably the closest thing we get to a joker origin story that came from Alan Moore. You get uh, From Hell and, and uh, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which was actually the last book he was working on. The last issue he published was uh, from his, like from The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, like volume five or whatever. Um, so seriously, though, like tip of the hat to Alan Moore. I do think the guy's a little out there, but, um, you know, as a writer, tips. The dude can, like, I mean, you're, you're putting him up with, like, with, you're putting some of his, his work up there with, with all the all-time greats, for sure. Yo, yo, that is not something to laugh at. <clears throat> Did I say shout-out to coffee yet? <sighs> shout-out to coffee. It's always needed. It's always wanted. Give me more. Give me more. Uh, let's see. So, abandoning his office job... Alan Moore decided he would take up writing and illustrating his own comics. He originally had a couple of strips that served like kind of just like random fanzines. Dude, I which I know tons of people around here that do that. There's a local mag in, in, in Olympia, Washington. There's a local uh, like zine fest here. There's local comic book artists. There's a local comics fest that like all of these people show up that you've just never heard. It's like they crawl out of the woodwork. And they're just all of a sudden here, and but they've been working on comics all year, and like, it's cool. It's cool to have like a, a burgundy, a little scene. 
But that's kind of where Alan Moore started. He started working on fanzines. He started doing random parodies of like Paddington Bear. Uh, he started off a nobody. Right. Excuse me. Kind of like me. Kind of like you. Wait, I'm just that's negative juju. Get that out of here. Uh, you're you're somebody. I'm somebody too, I guess. Um, <clears throat> later on, though, he eventually wrote uh, 2000 AD, and that was one of Britain's most prominent comic magazines. He then he then went on to write a successful series of Judge Dredd, which is fucking rad. I was just thinking of the Judge Dredd the other day. I really, I think there is like an issue where there's like a, I think there's there's Dredd versus Terminator, I believe, and I think there's like a Dredd versus Predator somewhere. I not, I need to look it up. I, look it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so he just kind of started skipping around. He'd also begun writing minor stories for the Doctor Who Weekly, which I didn't even know was a thing. I'm a pretty recent Whovian myself. Uh, definitely watched all of it. But I'm thirsty for more. <gasps> um, but but uh, from 1980 to 1984, whoa, 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 whoa. Shout outs, shout outs to Evil L, shout outs to Harrison Hanna, shout outs to Casserole, shout outs to uh, Devo, shout outs to Monk Flower Band, shout outs to. Uh, oh, shit, who else is listening out there? Uh, well, if you're listening, shout outs to you. Uh, <laughs> so through 84 Moore maintained his status as a freelance writer uh, however he did kind of take work from a variety of companies like Marvel UK which was a big thing under his belt but so he I mean like I said he started off bouncing around a lot but eventually he lands himself a gig doing DC comics right and that's where he really started getting famous he started doing like the the, the the tale of fucking swamp thing he started doing he started he wrote the watchman which is considered he wrote just think about that this dude that just retired from comics Alan Moore wrote the watchman right which is considered one of the m- most seminal fucking works it's it's considered like a defining work for at least a decade. It's considered like like it it provided a tone for the 80s and the rest of the comic book industry. And I mean Frank Miller also helped with that, but Alan Moore really set the fucking tone. Uh, he did V for Vendetta, like I said, which uh, was actually uh, turned into a movie later on, as we all know. Uh, there's these uh, down at the farmers market, where I, across the street from where I work, sometimes there's these vegan meat protesters. Or uh, it's confusing. It's confusing what they're protesting, but they're always wearing Guy Fox masks, masks, right? So clearly they've seen V for Vendetta, and so clearly you probably have to. If those if those vegan protesters have seen it, you probably have to. Uh, <laughs> but. So that got turned into a movie, like a, like a handful of his works. So a Watchmen got turned into a movie. V for Vendetta got turned into a movie. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen got turned into a movie. But Alan Moore despised it. He was he didn't he didn't like it because he got he got shafted over royalties <coughs> through Watchmen, I think, and then the rest of the the, the he just I don't know I just I. He, <laughs> He didn't jive with the transition to motion picture, we'll say. Which I don't, you know, whatever. I don't disagree with him. Sometimes, I, I say, I think Watchmen's kind of a, a different case uh, a little bit because there are certain sections of that movie, there are, sh- there are shots of that movie at least, that are really cool to see, like, live action uh, from the panel. Like, it looks really- Yo. I'm not saying that the panel's not better. God damn, the live the live studio audience is fucking intense today. Uh, I'm just saying, like the, the it was cool to see like these panels turn into like you know motion. Um, the, however, that movie's ending is rivetingly bad. Uh, okay, but like I said, so Alan Moore really he did the saga of Swamp Thing, which which just completely turned that character into a, like a, a, an A-list, no Al, no Swamp Thing character, you know what I mean? 
Like, it... It's like anything Alan Moore touched. He pretty much, like, recreate... He would, like, recreate it in this kind of, like, darker sort of... I don't know, more, like, gr- like drama, emotional, gritty way. I don't know. All those words strung together don't probably make any sense. So go pick up an Alan Moore book and, like, you tell me what you think about it. Um, if you need, I'll lend you my copy of Watchmen. But if you don't give it back, I'll break your fucking kneecaps. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I've lent out so many books over the years that I have never gotten back. And I'm also kind of guilty of that, too. Yo, shout out to Yellow Teeth. I think I still have your copy of Dune, bro. <laughs> also... Uh, I'm gonna be doing a podcast coming up about one of my most favorite albums of this last year. Uh, it's it's called it's from this band called uh, the South the South Miller Street Toe Tappers, and it's fucking incredible. And you've never heard of it, so you know egg on your face. But that's again not what we're talking about today. We're talking about Alan Moore. So Alan Moore, like I said, he went on to do just incredible works he he blew he blew the fucking pants off the industry he wrote some i really i've i've never fully i found like the script again but i i read when i was a kid i would spend time at the school library instead of going to class sometimes and i would just spend time like reading about comics or reading comics and reading like the history of comics or the or the about the writers and I know I should have been in class, but, you know, more interesting stuff. Uh, anyway, so he he wrote this, like, idea, this pitch for this thing called Twilight of the Superheroes, which was this incredible, expansive, like, all-encompassing DC story where, like, it's this dystopian future where all the, the, the heroes are broken up into different houses and then there's, like, the House of Lightning, which is, like, Captain Marvel and the Marvel family. There's, like, the House of Steel, which is, like, Superman and, and, and Wonder Woman who have married and, and, and procreated. And then there's, like, the, like the, all the humans and then the, the villains and, like, the House of Magic or whatever, which is, like, all this, like, the magic or the House of Mystery and it's all the magic uh, characters. And it's it's just this huge, expansive thing that, that was based off of, like, the Twilight of the Gods or whatever. It's, like, this opera uh, movement. Anyway, I looked it up once. I could never find it again. They denied it. They never wanted to publish it. <sighs> if only they would give us all the good things. Either way, this has been another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. We've touched base on Alan Moore, and I just want to say once again, congratulations on retirement, sir. He's not retiring from writing. He's just retiring from the comic book industry. He's made it. He's given us everything we needed from him. We can thank him for his service. Either way, I guess have a good day. This has been another episode of Coffee and Contemplation. I'm going to finish my cup, go kiss my girlfriend, and see how the day goes. You go ripen up your coconut as best you can because I'm going to do the same. And like they say, keep your stick on the ice.